my name is Phil Hosgood. I'm from the University of Plymouth and I'm a physical oceanographer. On this research expedition, I'm looking to understand the physical drivers for the manta foraging within Hanifaru Bay. So most of the research to date has been focused on quantifying the number of manta that aggregate within the bay. It's understood or hypothesized that the reason they aggregate is linked in some way to tidal flow and the accumulation of uh, zooplankton, their food. So what I'm interested in from a physical oceanographic perspective is how the ocean currents and the water properties change throughout tidal cycles and longer and are responsible for that dense aggregation of the zooplankton in the bay. So the two principal pieces of equipment I'm using on this research expedition, which is somewhat limited by the practicalities involved of operating in such a confined area and on a small boat, are um, firstly uh, CTD, which stands for conductivity, temperature and depth. And I'm using two of these, one of these on a bed frame that I'll talk about in just a second, and another which I'm using to profile from the surface to the seabed. A CTD tells us the basic water properties. So it tells us the salinity, the temperature, and at what depth we're making the measurements. And from this, we can tell when the actual water masses which are entering the bay are changing. The other key piece of equipment, piece of equipment that I'm using is an acoustic Doppler current profiler. So this is essentially a current meter that uses acoustic pulses to measure the velocity of the water above the instrument. In addition to measuring the currents, the specific instrument I'm using also has a number of special features which are going to be particularly useful for this project, not least of which is the echo sounder mode, which is a vertical beam which sends acoustic energy vertically upwards and measures the intensity of the echo returning to the instrument. And what that enables us to tell crucially is the density of zooplankton passing over the top of the instrument. So in addition to the currents and how these, these change throughout the tidal cycle and over longer periods, it also gives us a very, very high resolution detail of the zooplankton that are passing over the top of the instrument. I think the, 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 the crucial step we're taking in this project is to start drawing together the different disciplines to provide a much more integrated understanding of how these very specific animals, the manta ray, use a specific site. And by providing that integrated understanding, we really understand much better how the manta ray use their habitat. And that understanding can then be applied to other sites. So whilst this research is specific to Hanifaru, the understanding we gain about the behavior of manta and the way that they respond to the environmental conditions is something that can then be applied to conservation efforts worldwide. 